Hey folks, I wanted to make a quick video today to talk about breath. This came up in our Secret Singing Lessons group call this evening, um, which is just how much misinformation there is out there in the world about breathing technique and what needs to be done for singing. So quite often, I have had people come for like who are interested in joining the online course or in taking one-on-one -on -one lessons with me who have issues like respiratory issues such as asthma or something else that affects their ability to um, their lung capacity or their ability to take deep breaths stuff like that and they want to know can I sing with these kind of issues if I can't take really deep breaths and the answer is <laughs> absolutely yes you can um, and there's a lot of talk around diaphragmatic breathing in the singing world. And, uh, you know, if you follow me and a whole bunch of other vocal coaches and singing teachers on Instagram, you probably know this already. But for those who might not have heard this kind of thing before, but who have heard people talking about diaphragmatic breathing for singing or in any other context, all breathing uses the diaphragm. If you weren't using your diaphragm, you would not be breathing. Um, we cannot really consciously control our diaphragm. It's part of the involuntary, the autonomic nervous system. Um, and you can't like work your diaphragm. You can obviously control the way that you breathe, but that is more through using the abdominal muscles, the intercostal muscles, which are between the ribs and other, you know, parts of your abdomen and torso to facilitate breathing in different kinds of ways. Now, we breathe in different kinds of ways for different purposes. You breathe differently when you're just sitting at rest versus when you're running for the bus. And I definitely do not consider myself to be an expert in breath or breathing techniques because there is, there is just so much out there, so much information, so many different people saying that they have the, the right way to breathe, um, whether that is in the singing world, whether it's in yoga and meditation, whether it's in um, like the fitness world, there are many, many different approaches and techniques to breath. And I have done a fair amount of study and I still feel like I know very little, but what I do know is that we don't need as much air for singing as we often feel like we do. And for myself, most of my vocal training before I learnt sort of an anatomy-based approach to the voice was the message that I overwhelmingly got was more air is better. So in order to hit a high note or, um, or make a really loud sound, you need to take in a whole lot of air, which you do by diaphragmatic breathing and filling your belly up like a balloon. And then you're gonna push the breath out there. You hear different things. You'll hear like tighten the abdominal muscles. You'll hear, I had, um, you know, exercise like, like working the belly muscles like that to push the air out. And, when, especially when we're singing really high notes and really loud stuff, like for example, belting as a very loud, shouty kind of vocal quality. Um, these tend to need less air, not more. And if you take in really big breaths for something like belting, you're gonna make it much more difficult for yourself. And if you try to push a lot of air out, it's likely to create instability in the vocal folds and just have them like blow apart or you might constrict in your throat and end up hurting yourself. Um, I'm not here to get into the complex details of how all that works, but I just want you to know, especially if you're a beginner singer, that you don't need to be able to take really deep breaths to sing. Deep breaths, having a lot of breath in your lungs is useful for long notes and phrases. So think about the air as being about the time that you spend singing, the distance that you're going, rather than about the strength of the sound or the pitch. So um, when you, if and if you feel like you're running out of breath while singing, 
um, it may be less to do with the way that you're breathing. It's not necessarily that you're breathing wrong. It might be more to do with the efficiency of how you're using that breath, what's happening with your vocal folds themselves. If they're a little bit apart and you're creating a breathy kind of sound, then you're essentially leaking air and your sound is going to have a breathy quality, but you're going to run out of breath a lot faster using a breathy quality. Nothing wrong with a breathy quality, but using a breathy quality, you are going to run out of air faster. So this has already gone on longer than I wanted to really post for. Um, the takeaway being you don't like more air isn't necessarily better. And if you are just wanting to get into singing, but you feel like you might be limited by your ability to breathe correctly, met, like try an experiment of just not worrying about how you're breathing. And if, if you feel like you might be overthinking the way that you're breathing, um, or you've tried different breathing techniques for anything, singing, or you've tried it in yoga or whatever, and you're trying to apply that to singing, just try letting go of that. Try not worrying about your breath and see if your breath maybe just takes care of itself. It may, it may and it may not. But again, you don't necessarily need huge breaths in order to sing. And you definitely don't need to push out a lot of air. Um, I spend more of my time working with people on reducing their breath effort, how hard they're working their air out, trying to use less air, be more efficient with their breath uh, than I do on getting people to use more. Um, for myself included, I definitely had to unlearn overworking with my breath in order to protect my voice, protect myself from injury and fatigue, and just make singing better and easier. So that's my little video for today. You probably don't need as much air as you think you do. Uh, if you have any experiences with breath and singing, feel free to drop a comment and let me know about it. Um, I'm always interested in hearing the experiences that people have had. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.